Hey y'all, welcome to Smoky Beginnings. Today we're going to go over how to grill hot dogs and hamburgers on a charcoal grill. In this improper video, we will go over how to start the charcoal, how to set up a two-zone fire, how to grill the hot dogs and hamburgers along with some corn on the cob. First off, we're going to start our cook with lighting our charcoal briquettes. Take one full charcoal chimney that is going to be a quick cook, so we don't need a lot of coals. One full size chimney is going to be more than enough. Put it on the lower charcoal rack, not the actual cooking grate, and light the paper or the fire starter. You can see here that my lighter is low on fuel and doesn't stay lit, which made lighting the fire starter a little difficult, but I was able to finally get it lit. Pro tip, don't be like me. Make sure you're prepared for things that could happen like a lighter that is low on fuel. Also make sure that your charcoal chimney is properly lined with paper. Anyways, we're gonna wait about 15 minutes while the coals ignite and ash over. A good indicator that the coals are ready is that the smoke will be clear or bluish and there won't be any flare ups. The corn on the cob is going to take the longest to grill, so that will go on the grill first. But before we put the corn on the grill, notice that I have a two-zone fire set up. For a two-zone fire, we want all our coals off to one side, creating a direct heat zone. The other side is empty, which creates an indirect heat zone. The two-zone fire is a great way of giving you more control when grilling. If things are cooking too fast or burning, we can move the food over to the side with less heat. Or if we want, to get a nice sear, we move the item over the hot zone. Next, I want to talk about the hot dogs. I'm using a Hoffman's All Be Frank. They are larger and have a better casing than your standard ballpark frank, which gives a nice snap of biting into them. I'm going to place them horizontally on the grill over the direct heat at first. I'll be rolling the hot dogs back and forth to avoid any burn spots. As you see here, even within the hot zone, there's still some fluctuations with the heat. The center of the hot zone is definitely hotter than the edges, which is indicated by the grill marks. I'm going to move the hot dogs that are in the center to the outer edges of the hot zone because I want them to cook evenly but at a slower pace. And then these hot dogs look like they're just about done, so I'll take them off the grill. Some things that you want to look for to tell that a hot dog is done is that it's plumped up and that it's split and it has a nice sear on the outside. I've now moved the corn over to the hot zone to speed up the grilling process. I have also added the hamburgers. Normally you will want to make your own patties with an 80-20 blend. However, today we were short on time and I used frozen patties. Since the frozen patties have to thaw, I want them to come up to temp slowly, which is the reason that they are on the indirect side of the grill. Now, I have flipped the burgers to check for the doneness, which is the perfect time to season the burgers if you haven't already. Today I'm using an all-purpose seasoning salt by Everglades Seasoning. Some of the flavors within this are salt, pepper, onion, and garlic. I've closed the lid of the grill to keep the temperature consistent. The hamburgers that needed to be well done have now been moved over to the direct heat zone, while the burgers that are supposed to be medium or medium rare are over on the indirect zone. Now the medium hamburgers have been removed, while the well done burgers will be given just a few more minutes. At this point, if we have to add cheese, go ahead and do so now. At the end of the cook, close both the top and the bottom damper to cut off the airflow to the coals and shut down the grill. As a twist, I made some sriracha butter for the corn on the cob. I wanted the butter to be the predominant flavor with a hint of sriracha. Therefore, I added one tablespoon of sriracha to three tablespoons of butter and threw in a clove of garlic. Sometimes I also like to add a, just a squeeze of lime juice. Now to soften the butter, I put it into the microwave 10 seconds at a time until I was able to mix it. Take the softened butter, Add the sriracha and the minced garlic and combine until you get a spreadable mixture. For this meal, I have done a full write-up that you can find at SmokyBeginnings.com. As always, I want to thank you for watching. If you found this video valuable, go ahead and check out our other videos. Until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tangling. Have a good one.